The situation is extremely dangerous now, isn't it? It is. And all of the factors that led to the attacks yesterday still exist. You've got all these people congregating at the airport. Uh, it's a chaotic security situation. You obviously have the targets that are there. You've got the military there. You've got civilians that are there. You have the Taliban that are there that uh, ISK hates. And of course, you've got the world's media there to broadcast anything that happens. Thank you, um, Really, tactically, how wise was it to have this particular evacuation happening mainly at this particular airport, which is actually surrounded in a city centre? Um, sounds a bit foolish. I mean, haven't they got other air bases that they could have used, like Bagram and things like that? I think this is one of the big questions uh, that is going to be looked into in not only months, but years to come about why the U.S. pulled up so quickly out of that major military base. Uh, and, you know, we end up with this chaotic situation at the airport where obviously the, the airport itself is secure, but the outside area is just, you know, obviously people are gathering, have been gathering for days. It was such an inviting target. You've got thousands packed together. You can imagine in terms of a suicide bomber, we saw yesterday the damage that, that a suicide bomber, multiple suicide bombers can do. And, and again, th those conditions exist today and exist, will probably exist tomorrow as well. Can I, but then surely, though, what kind of, you know, what kind of option does Joe Biden have? Surely he could have planned this better. OK, so it was a sort of abrupt ending, but an, mm. an abrupt timing. But surely he could have planned this better? Well, what does he have at his disposal uh, to plan this in a, in a decent way? I, I mean, I, I, again, I mean, the, the administration obviously has made the political decision to pull out. Uh, ultimately, you would think it would be the military that would decide when to withdraw from bases. Uh, and they obviously, they, I assume that they would have planned for such a situation. Part of the issue is obviously you have tens of thousands of Afghanis who are connected to not only the United States, I'm Canadian, to Canada, to various Western nations, the UK, of course. You've got uh, civilians, you've got American citizens, apparently there's over a thousand still in Afghanistan. So the scale of it, I think, is something that should have been anticipated. And obviously having one airport in Kabul, I mean, you now have people being encouraged to cross borders as well uh, as a way of getting out. But I think the scale of it has is, is also contributed to the chaotic situation that we're in at the moment. That the group that are responsible for this attack are a group called ISIS-K. So how do they differ from the original ISIS? Well, they're, uh, they're effectively an affiliate, an offshoot. They formed in 2015. They're based in what they call Khorasan, which is Afghanistan, Pakistan, Iran, effectively Central Asia. So they pledged allegiance to the original Islamic State. They've been active since 2015, carrying out attacks. The, the U.S. has actually had a, quite a good record of, of taking up the leaders of this group. They've taken it, killed multiple leaders of the group. The group is targeted to what we would just carried out horrendous attacks. It, we, the, what we heard from of them was in May when they attacked a girls' school in Kabul and killed dozens of female students. So they've targeted Shias, they've targeted religious minorities, they've gone after government officials. Um, they have a horrendous track record. I mean, they make the Taliban look like moderates. Mm. But, and, and speaking of the Taliban, strategically, though, for them, in a sense, now that the Americans will be hunting down ISIS K or the leaders, or this is this is is not. I mean, in a sense, it's it's a good thing for the Taliban. I'm not saying, but if you look at it strategically, they would rather that maybe the U.S. were attacking um, ISIS K than they having to deal with them. I mean, this is one of the interesting aspects of this: is that you you have effectively an enemy of both the Taliban and the United States. If anything, going forward, uh, ISIS-K is more of a threat to the Taliban mm. than it is to the West. I mean, it's looking, obviously, to take over uh, Afghanistan, ultimately. It sees the Taliban as too moderate. It was opposed to its uh, negotiations with the United States last year. So uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, uh, effectively, is, is what's happening at the moment. And obviously, the more the security situation is destabilized, the more a group like ISIS-K is going to 
be striking out. And, and uh, sadly, again, it is going to be Afghanis that, that bear the brunt of this. Mm. Steve, this is a nightmare scenario for Biden, isn't it? I mean, as we were just hearing there, the first U.S. deaths in Afghanistan in over 18 mm -hmm. months. How big of a foreign policy disaster is this for him? It is, it is, it is massive. It, mm -hmm. You know, this is a chaotic situation, even though obviously Biden inherited, the, you know, the withdrawal schedule from the previous administration, you know, to have this unfold the way that it have it has, it just looks just so disorganized. And, and I keep using the word chaotic, and, and that is the situation. Now, how much that will play out politically, I mean, foreign policy generally doesn't tend to sway American elections. You obviously have midterm elections next year. Uh, again, foreign policy even plays less of a factor in midterm elections. But certainly in terms of his standing with the American public, it, 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 there's no question that it damages it. Mm. And the other side of it is that they sort of downed tools and sort of fled, as in the U.S., left all, you know, lots of equipment, black hawk, mm. hawks, weapons, medical supplies, night vision, goggles, and loads of those things now in, in the hands of the Taliban. I mean, surely, again, what, what a disaster that is. What does this mean? Are they going to be using that equipment against the US or against ISIS-K? I mean, there's an irony here in that, obviously, in the 1980s with the war against the Soviets in Afghanistan, the U.S. put uh, Stinger missiles in, and then there was fear that those missiles would end up with Al Qaeda and be used to attack the West. I mean, obviously, some of that equipment is quite sophisticated, and you need, you know, proper mechanics and equi and you know equipment to repair. Uh, but it is possible, obviously, that some of the lower level uh, ordnance, uh, you know, uh, will be used against uh, Western interests or, or smuggled out of the country. Steve, just very briefly, you're talking about chaotic scenes on the ground. How many more people do you think they can get to safely evacuate? We are hearing warnings that more, more attacks are expected. I think this will speed an end to the evacuations. I mean, again, as long as there's this situation at the airport, it is, you know, almost an encouragement for more attacks. So. It's impossible to say, but obviously there are people, as has been pointed out endlessly by various politicians, there are people that should be out that will not get out, and this is only going to increase that number, I'm afraid. Counterterrorism expert at the University of Birmingham, Dr. Steve Hewitt, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.